I'm Dan Matheson, I'm 65 years old, and I was diagnosed with hereditary amyloidosis in March of 2018. Before being diagnosed, I was extremely active. I used to go to the gym, I could run, um, I would go camping, we traveled extensively. I've been to southern France, uh, California, all over the northwest US. I have had uh, a lot of fun over the last about 13 years going on an annual motorcycle trip with my best friends. And with them, I've been to everything from Yellowstone National Park to San Francisco, to the Golden Gate Bridge, to Four Corners down in Arizona, uh, up and down the Oregon coast. And that has slowly been taken away from me because I'm no longer strong enough to hold and move a motorcycle. Um, so there are a lot of things that I can no longer do, um, so I have to find new things. I was originally treated for congestive heart failure. I went to a private medicine clinic to um, have them take a look and get a second opinion. They did an extensive family history, including interviewing my sister when there was questions that I couldn't answer. And this is where it came out that my mother had had amyloid material in her. I have a stack of letters that have been with me that my mom gave me, and these are from my great-grandmother in the 1900s. And they're letters that she wrote to her daughter, my, who was my grandmother, living in Boston at the time. And she's talking about her ailments and what she's feeling. So when I think back in the history of the family and the ailments and how my both grandmothers died, that these letters played a vital role in understanding the progression of the disease and that this has been around in this family for a long time and is something to really mm -hmm. pay attention to. This covers 100 years. Yes, these 19, are from 1926. 1926, yeah. I'm Dr. Noel Fine. I'm a cardiologist in Calgary, Alberta. And I'm the director of our cardiac amyloidosis clinic there. I met Dan about four years ago when he was referred to our clinic for a possible diagnosis of cardiac amyloidosis. He had been having symptoms of heart failure and his local clinicians had done some tests which were suggestive of that diagnosis. And he was referred to our clinic for further workup and possible treatment. Uh, when I was finally diagnosed, I was told I had three to five years to live, but I'd probably live a little longer as I was in pretty good shape. Um, that to me wasn't acceptable. And we, and I say we, I mean my sons, myself, and, and my friends and family uh, started to look for different options. So it's very important that HATTR amyloidosis gets diagnosed as early as possible in the disease course. The reason for this is that we now have treatments available that can alter the disease course for patients with this condition. And we know that the likelihood of a good response to treatment is best when we diagnose the patient earlier on. If patients are diagnosed later in the disease course with worse signs and symptoms, then the high, there's a higher risk of irreversible organ damage occurring, uh, and the patients will not have as good a response to treatment. My name's Diana Matheson. I'm 58 years old, and I was diagnosed with hereditary amyloidosis in October of 2021. So it was at the beginning of 2021 that I started having these feelings more of the neuropathy in my feet. I went back to my doctor and he said, let's get you an appointment with a neurologist and get you some nerve conduction tests done. So I had just a little bit of sensation in my fingers, my first and second finger. And because I'm a classical pianist, I'm very sensitive to touch and the nuances of how movement very subtle, very minimal, but I felt it. And he said, you're such low grade, your blood levels are great. He said, you do not have hereditary amyloidosis. This is not something I would worry about. And so I called my brother up, I was like, great. And he said, Diana, until you get the genetic testing done, you really don't know. So he said, just get the test done. So I did. That week I went, I had the blood test done and they said it would be about 
seven to eight weeks before I'd hear. My contact there said, we have your results and we'd like to set up a meeting with you next week. So we had the conversation and she said, um, so we have your results and I'm sorry to tell you that you have hereditary amyloidosis. So. As the big brother, you tend to have to do everything first. And so me going through the stages that I did, the uh, early symptoms, early medications, the progress of the disease, and then finally being put onto a medication that virtually stops the progress of the disease, um, uh, it, it made me uh, de it de made me determined to make sure that everybody gets tested and for Diana to get tested. And when she did and was found to be positive, I think in my mind, it, it made my suffering worthwhile. Oh. You've always taken care of me. <laughs> 